Um, I'm, I'm Paul De Decker. I'm a, a professor in the linguistics department and um, I am, I've been working with uh, the Newfoundland and Labrador Stuttering Association over the last couple of years and this project, um, the idea for a reusable assignment and a lot of what I'm going to talk about today uh, has been inspired by, by that relationship. So I'll pass it along to the next person. Uh, let's see, should I go in my order of people on my screen? So Stacy, want to say hello? Just so we can get to know who you are. Um, my name is Stacy Alexander, and I'm an I'm a instructional design specialist. Sorry, I had to think about that for a second. And I work at uh, CIT out here in the university, and I'm uh, here today to learn more about uh, reusable assignments. Perfect. Um, Susan, there's some static on your on your audio, um, but uh, well, we want to hear from you. So if you say hello and then maybe mute yourself afterwards, then that might be okay. the best way to do it. Okay, my name is Ikevaling Susan Dintwe. I'm the sessional instructor in faculty of education. Okay, great. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Greg. Okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is Greg O'Grady. I am a, a, a professional person who stutters, and I specialize in covert stuttering. And I'm the chair of the Newfoundland Labrador Stuttering Association and the host of Some Stutter Law. Uh, Lauren? Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, um, uh, I'm uh, Lauren Mills. I'm a fourth year student at um, uh, Memorial um, uh, University. I am doing a uh, major in uh, linguistics and a minor in uh, psychology, and I hope to one day pursue a career in um, uh, speech language uh, pathology one day. Great. And uh, Darlene, we've we've already we've heard from you, so uh, we'll we'll, we'll uh, go right to Erica. Oh, you might be muted, Erica. Why? Why? All right. <laughs> yes, there we go. <laughs> um, yes, I'm Erica. I'm in the chemistry department on the St. John's campus. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to learning about this. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Well, thanks. You, thank you for uh, joining us. Hopefully, um, uh, we, we give you enough uh, information um, to help you uh, think about uh, how, how something like this could be used in your own classes. Um, so uh, we've, we've introduced ourselves and initially, um, typically we, we, we just hear from instructors uh, during these things, but um, I thought it would be great to invite Lauren, um, a student in my class last year in, in fall 2022, who um, used one of these uh, assignments to great advantage. And um, so, so um, we also have Lauren here on the on the title page, and, um, and then I said, well, let's also include Greg uh, at the uh, Newfoundland and Labrador Stuttering Association, um, who was a recipient who, who Lauren sent her assignment to, um, and uh, and so there's been a, a developing relationship between Lauren and the LSA. Um, and, uh, and myself as well. So, uh, so all three of us are here to give, um, a, a slightly different points of view on, uh, on how this assignment was interpreted and, and, uh, made useful. Um, so that's us, uh, we're, I'm going to, I'm going to start things off. I'm going to talk about my, um, my class that, the. Um, that this assignment that I um, started this assignment in um, and some general ideas about uh, why I think um, some things like reusable assignments are a good idea. Um, Lauren's gonna take it over and uh, talk about um, her interpretation of the assignment and how she uh, worked on the assignment. And then Greg is gonna offer a bit of uh, feedback and thoughts on, um, on receiving Lauren's uh, project. 
and then we'll open it up to uh, um, to a discussion with everybody uh, that's on that's on here today. Um, I did have a another thought that I was going to say, but I forgot what that is now. So okay, so we'll just get right into uh, into uh, talking about reusable assignments. Um, I I think there's two problems. There's probably lots of lots more problems of, of, with about homework uh, assi class assignments, um, but I'm going to focus on two: uh, the way we've been doing things, the way I think we've been doing things traditionally, and we the default uh, assumptions when it comes to assigning an assignment and and what we are asking students to do um, in our classes. So. Um, you know, that was the other thing as I mentioned. If you if you have questions and comments, uh, feel free to uh, pipe in anytime throughout the uh, the uh, the presentation. Um, I'm going to ask you now. Um, looking at these two images, um, can you think of do these do these images tell you anything about what I think the two problems with homework might be? Do they do they inspire any feelings of? Uh, of of concern, and feel free to jump in if you have any any thoughts. A wide open road is something that students are struggling with right now in my class. With with one of the mm. assignments is very open ended. Ah, yep. Okay. Anybody else? I did this with Lauren and Greg yesterday, so they already know the the right answers. <laughs> No, there's no no right answers, but there are two ideas I want to uh, I want to I want to talk about. Okay, so um, here's what I think are two problems with uh, with with current uh, contemporary and traditional assignments, unless we've thought deeply about them and decided to uh, buck the norm and and turn turn over the status quo. Um, I think I think assignments and homeworks homework assignments that we give to our students are, are, are restrictive. Um, they don't allow for much uh, exploration beyond what the instructor has in mind. Um, typically, we have uh, a, a, a test or an assignment or a research essay where we say, uh, write about this topic um, and apply it to the course and do it in a certain way. Um, typically, we, we assign essays much to the uh, dismay of people who don't like writing essays. Um, and so so we're locked into this idea that uh, scholarly work is text based um, and should be should be uh, modeled on previous uh, or, or traditional scholarly work, which is text based and uh, books or journal articles or, or whatever. Right. Um, so that's that's one that's one problem that I want to uh, work with and break out of. Um, and the other uh, uh, issue is that um, in in contrast to the pi picture of a wide open road here, um, I think that uh, assignments are short sighted that we don't see beyond uh, the immediate context. Okay, so we don't have the the long term goals of the of our students in mind. We want them to. Uh, understand and acquire competency in the material that we're teaching and um, whether they use it outside of the class or come back to it ever again is um, not our problem, so to speak. Um, they have to show that they've understood what the course is about. Um, so that's 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 narrow. That's pretty narrowly narrowly defined. Um, so. Um, the other, the other problem, uh, probably taking both of those two ideas in mind, short sightedness and restrictive, is that um, our assignments that we give to students are are disposable. Um, as uh, Birdall says here, university students spend a lot of time writing or completing assignments, and instructors spend a lot of time grading these same assignments. And after all this effort, many assignments end up in the physical or computer trash, rarely thought of again. Okay. Um, we may, I, I don't know how typical I, I am as a, was as a student. I kept a lot of assignments. I had a treasure trove of assignments that I completed as a, as a student. 
but um, to say that I they, I found use in those after they were completed is probably stretching it a bit. I, I, I collect them just because I'm up. I like to collect them at the time. And now I don't know where they are. They're probably, yeah, they're probably thrown out. Um, so, so what we're really doing, unfortunately, is we're, we're setting up a student essay to trash pipeline um, where we are encouraging uh, through a lack of, uh, of further action, um, encouraging students to produce uh, an essay or, or an, a project assignment. Um, and then we grade it and we throw it out and that seems to be the norm. And for many people, that's okay. That's okay with them. They, they think that's, well, the student has shown evidence or has, hasn't shown evidence of, uh, of, of learning in my class. And, uh, once that's done, once that's out of the way, they can do whatever they want with it. I'm going to throw it away. I'm going to delete it from my computer. Um, and, uh, you know, if a student wants to keep it or throw it away, that's up to them. Um, and this is ironic because as instructors, we, um, are setting out an assumption. We're setting up a, a framework, um, where student research papers are a microcosm of journal, journal articles and booked chapters designed to meet the standards of scholars. But as scholars, we don't do anything else with it. We, we assign the assignment, they write it, they work on it, they hand it in, and then it's done. Right? So our our framework that we're asking them to work in is is based on how we work, but then we don't find any use in, in or value in their assignments afterwards. We say, okay, they've jumped through the hoops of academia and good. Now that they can they can uh, go on to their next class. So um, my question is, can we do better? Um, and I I think we can. And in my class last semester uh, or last last year, fall twenty twenty three. Um, I introduced uh, an alternative to um, this student essay to trash pipeline. Um, so my my class and uh, is linguistics thirty two ten. It's an introduction to sociolinguistics. Uh, it's an undergraduate class. There's a a prerequisite. Um, uh, it's an introductory linguistics class um, for students. Um, but so I've also had students take it with permission um, from from myself or the or the uh, department chair. Um, I think typically it's the instructor who gives permission. Um, and and just as a general summary of what we do in the class, it's an it's looks at approaches to studying the relationship between language and society. Okay, so the the central role of language in shaping and and reflecting uh, society and how language is uh is yeah also also a reflection of society um so this particular semester uh i wrote we will engage with concepts of multilingualism linguistic vitality uh pragmatics semiotics identity and ideology as they relate to vulnerable members in our communities and in particular um i was referring to um people who communicate differently Okay. So whether you're a speaker of a um, English as a second language in 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 Canada, um, where English and French are the um, official languages, um, so whether you've uh, migrated to Canada and you don't speak English or French as your as your first language, um, there's some issues of uh, adversity and vulnerability involved. Um, people who communicate uh, with uh, a non-standard or stigmatized variety of English, um, such as regional dialects uh, that aren't uh, valued as they as 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 highly as uh, what we call the main, main sta mainstream standard English, and people who uh, communicate with um, uh, so-called diagnosed uh, speech disorders, speech or language disorders, such as uh, stuttering or aphasia or a whole host of other um, um, communication. Uh, challenges, um, and in the in the course itself, there were um, or in in the in the uh, final assignment, there were um, two um, two things that I wanted to use to frame how students uh, went about the assignment. Um, the first is that the assignment um, should be publicly um, looking forward, so uh, working 
with the, the public in mind. So we often call this public engagement. Um, so the idea was that the assignment should have some reuse value beyond the course itself. And, um, and I suggested that um, um, one, one way to ensure that is to reach out to um, community groups within our, within, a, within St. John's or within Newfoundland and Labrador, or uh, to work with or have a, an association with a, a not-for-profit, a local not-for-profit. Um, the second idea was that um, they didn't have to write an essay. Um, they could do something called a digital media essay. Okay, so the essay is in the, the title itself, but it's it's very different. Um, instead of a traditional um, thesis-based essay, um, I, I, I presented the option as a uh, as being narrative-based, a narrative-based interpretation of uh, a sociolinguistic issues, any, any of the number of ones that we studied in our in our course, and that it could be presented in as a digital text. Okay, so could be could be a, something you uh, find on a website, images, um, uh, other media involved, um, or they could produce an audio or audio and video. Um, uh, uh, presentation. Um, a narrative based interpretation, as I mentioned, um, is a, it means that we prioritize uh, communicating our analysis as a series of related events or experiences instead of the more traditional research report that starts with a research question, followed by a thesis statement, methodology, data analysis, discussion of results, and ends with a conclusion. Okay, so that's what I didn't want. Um, I wanted I wanted to um, I wanted students to think about um, what it might mean to be a person who stutters, and 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 apply some of those ideas um, to some of the sociolinguistic concepts that we've um, uh, that we talked about in class. So, you know, it, it it it's not possible to step in other people's shoes and and really experience um, what it might mean, but um, the, we have a number of resources available. One uh, is a um, a podcast that I produce with Greg, um, and where Greg interviews a number of people who stutters who stare who, who share their their stories. So um, that was a was a was a resource that people could refer to to say, okay, here are some uh, issues or conflicts or controversies that um, people who uh, stutter um, face on a daily on a daily basis. Um, and the audience be, um, behind the, the digital media essay or, or for the essay itself um, is not necessarily me. I'll be evaluating it, but I wanted them to think about uh, their audience being somebody outside of the class, somebody outside the course, or somebody uh, not even associated with Memorial to begin with. Um, and so the, the, the main task was to present um, scholarly material um, such as the topics that we are introduced to in class uh, in an accessible way. Okay. So that's a brief overview of the assignment. And, and, and um, if there are questions, we can certainly uh, um, talk about those. Um, but I'm going to turn things over to Laura now and get her take on um, on, on how she interpreted the, the assignment and where she went with it. So Lauren, over to you. Hello, so I'm uh, Lauren. Um, I've already said this, so I won't um, say it um, again. Um, um, Dr. De uh, Decker, uh, I I'm not sure if you can play the recording or not. Yeah. Just listen to like, like a little bit of the assignment. I sure, sure can. can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so Lauren did a, um, a an audio uh essay an audio narrative um and we'll play it's it's fairly short but i'm not i, I won't play the whole thing i'll just play a a, a minute of, of it or so um let's see share quick time player share computer audio there we go okay so let me know if you um just give me a thumbs up if you if you can hear this it's the first day of school Many kids are excited to get back and see their peers, except some. Vulnerable speech identities. The children who struggle with stuttering and other speech disorders. Stuttering is very common. 
With the survey taken in three rural Newfoundland communities, 85% of the respondents reported knowing stutterers, and 39% reported being related to stutterers. This speech barrier leads to bullying and battling feelings of not being heard and misunderstood. Bullying is a huge problem with children, especially those who stutter. Children with speech language disorders are five times more likely to be bullied. A Penn State University study showed that 44% of stutterers were victimized, while only 9% of non-stutterers reported bullying. This all leads to the signs that students are not learning about vulnerable speech populations and therefore they don't know how to communicate with them. As someone with a stutter, a lot of people don't know how to help someone with a speech impediment. What people think helps someone who struggles with a stutter actually doesn't help at all. Such as telling them to relax or take a deep breath. To someone who stutters, this isn't helpful and can actually make them feel as though they are being cut off in the middle of their sentence. In reality, the one thing that helps those who stutter is just being patient, letting them say what they have to say, even if it takes a little bit longer. Another thing. Okay, sorry to cut you off there, uh, Lauren, but uh, I think that gives a, a good a good sense of what the um, the tone and and the style of uh, of your of your uh, assignment was. So we'll, we'll turn it back over to you to tell us a little bit more about it. Oh, and I will share the PowerPoint slides as well. No worries. Okay. There we go. Okay. So my um, uh, interpretation of the uh, question. So for the project, my um, uh, interpretation of the question was to talk about a vulnerable speech um, uh, identity and to um, uh, elaborate on an um, uh, um, uh, issue that um, uh, they may face. So when thinking about what vulnerable speech identity I was going to do my, uh, my uh, project on, it only seemed right to uh, do it on uh, myself. Um, I have had a stutter since I was in uh, grade three. And as a person who stutters, I knew this is what I wanted to focus my uh, project on. Um, I also chose to focus my assignment on the school um, uh, system as this is where I felt I experienced most of my uh, challenges with my speech. Um, so this project was different than other assignments as we could do either a um, uh, audio um, uh, um, uh, essay or an audio and uh, visual. Um, I chose to do just the um, uh, audio. So this format was different than any other assignments I had done before as it wasn't a um, my formal essay and it wasn't a uh, presentation that I would have to do in front of a class. Um, so there were multiple stages. So the audio essay had to be done in several stages. Um, first, I wrote a script of what I wanted my audio to have. So I enjoyed this as I didn't have to have a certain format or uh, punctuation. So I just wrote this huge long um, uh, paragraph with and so after I was happy with how my um, uh, script sounded aloud, it was time to uh, record. So I wanted to be in a uh, quiet space. So I actually sat in my car in my uh, driveway with my laptop and and my uh, phone. And I did it over and over and over again till I was happy with um, uh, with um, uh, how it sounded. And when I finally came uh, back inside, to my parents, they were really confused as to uh, where I was gone um, uh, for so long, and I had to explain to them that I was just sitting in the back seat of my car, uh, recording uh, myself just talking over and over and over. And I think they were really 
I'm uh, confused. So I actually added a, um, a photo of what I probably uh, looked like for hours just in the back seat of my car. Um, so writing from experience, uh, writing from my own personal experiences with both easy and difficult. Um, it made it easy as it was from my own personal experiences, but it was also difficult because I had to talk about some very traumatic experiences that someone with a stutter would go through, especially growing up and in the school system. So sociolinguistics into my personal life was another challenge I faced when doing my project um, as trying to connect the course material to my personal life um, at first wasn't easy, but, um, as I did the assignment, I found I actually had a better, um, uh, understanding of the, uh, um, uh, information and the course material when seeing it through my own life experiences. Um, so, uh, re um, uh, reusable, so, um, uh, advocacy. Through the assignment, I felt I was able to be a voice for those like myself who have a hard time um, uh, speaking up. I enjoyed that this assignment gave me the comfort to record myself as many times as needed till I was pleased with the results. Unlike a presentation that puts in enormous pressure and anxiety on people who do not mess up in that one moment, especially someone who stutters, someone thinking about not stuttering only makes it worse. So then with Greg and the um, uh, NLSA feedback, so thanks to Dr. D. Decker, Decker, I was able to get in touch with Greg at the Newfoundland and Labrador Stuttering Association, and I was able to share my assignment on a greater scale and again to be that voice for stutters like myself. Um, I'm continuing to, to tell my story. I've been working with Greg and uh, Dr. D. Decker to incorporate more specific experiences and challenges I faced as a stutter in the school system. And I'm in the works of recording a um, uh, episode for the Some Stutter Love podcast. So keep an eye out for that episode. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, Greg, do you want to say a few words? I've put your uh, your image of you hard at work in the in the radio station here. You might you might be muted there. I, I think. Okay. There we go. Few people understand how stuttering can impact preschool, school-age children, adolescents, adults, and seniors who stutter, quality of life, as well as their emotional and mental health. Dr. Paul De Decker and Warren Mills' reasonable assignment. Unleashing Student Work Project echoes the paramount importance of how reusable assignments, especially by Lauren, who found the courage and strength within to disclose the stuttering and to share her challenges related, helps raise awareness, education, understanding, and acceptance of stuttering, and in doing so, helps build capacity for teachers and students who do not stutter today and in the future, understanding the challenges and needs of students who stutter. People who stutter by sharing their stories with the use of social media is a means for advocacy and support for each other is a step toward acceptance of their stuttering and as a support for families. And also by sharing stories online that is similar to the reusable assignment. These Digital uh, sharing are always available for you for current and uh, uh, people who stutter today and in the future. Use of reusable assignments can stimulate interactive dialogue and discussion about stuttering, bring awareness of stuttering to a friendly global community and awareness about what's happening in the stuttering community around the world, the latest on stuttering, research, therapy, and much more. Some stutter law message is about law, and the Newfoundland Labrador Stuttering Association's mission of advocacy and support is making a difference with the use of social media. But it's significant about some stutter law and the 
the uh, Newfoundland Labrador Southern Association is it's not only a venue for listening to and reading about new experiences shared by people who stutter, but it also provides a unique and realistic perspective of having a stutter, but as useful as but as useful episodes and information resources for future education use and required. Some set a law and the Newfoundland Library Southern Association is reaching out and educating the general public across Newfoundland and Labrador and the world. And now we're you know we're educating people from the more than I I applaud Dr. D. Deckers and Lauren for bringing to our attention the importance and the value of how reusable assignments unleashing student work projects can be beneficial not only for youth within the academic world, but also as a benefit for knowledge within the global uh, community at large. What is also paramount important is Lauren's reuse of her assignment preservation. It is a definite accomplishment. The crossing, I feel, yet another threshold for Lauren for the acceptance of her southern and assessment forward towards enhancing his quality of life as a person who stutters. So thank you very much and congratulations, Dr. Decker and Lauren for this enlightening presentation and its, its potential for future for, uh, future presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you, Greg. So to uh, get into the, 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 the final lap here, um, um, as we were, we were, um, uh, talking, we were, we were practicing our presentation yesterday with all three of us together. Uh, we started thinking about, um, how this project is, is reusable and useful beyond the, the confines of the class. And, um, what, what Lauren produced is something that's being produced, um, on larger scale, well, maybe not larger, smaller scales, but maybe across the across the whole world. Um, there are lots of uh, a, a number of uh, podcasts about stuttering and uh, the stuttering experience. Um, so, th so what Lauren produced is is uh, an example uh, of of those of that media, the social media that uh, um, a number of people are engaged in uh, globally. Um, these stories are also shared on the um, International Stuttering Awareness Day website, which, by the way, International Stuttering Awareness Day is October 22nd. So uh, this is a, uh, a great time to be uh, to be able to speak about this. Um, we have a couple more weeks before um, International Stuttering Awareness Day. Um, and and so um, I, unbeknownst to me at the time, I didn't know that um, uh, what Lauren was was working on could be could easily fit into um, uh, a website that is accessible to people who stutter across the across the world. Greg himself actually um, recorded a uh, a personal story and posted it to the the website. It's a, a video audio and video presentation uh, of Greg uh, talking about his experiences um, and. Uh, and, and maybe maybe for International Stuttering Awareness Day 2024, Lauren might be able to submit her uh, her episode, her her own personal story as well. So um, through the use of social media, there's these stories can reach a larger audience. They they uh, have value, and there are people who um, seek out these these particular stories and experiences uh, because they themselves are going through the same experience themselves and they were looking for a community looking for someone else to share their story with and to hear and to hear uh, other people's stories. Um, so I just as a, in the way of concluding, um, I, I have a, a few requests for um, for all of us to think about um, when we're designing our, our assignments going forward um, and hopefully we'll uh, think about them a, a little bit differently. So to think broadly about we, what we ask our students to do and to prioritize uh, this idea of reusability and usefulness. Okay. Um, 
to consider what resources we have available in our own community. Um, it's, it's, there's a little bit of a learning curve in order to produce an audio narrative essay. Um, but there's lots of people, um, who, who can help out. Um, I'm happy to share, share what I know about uh, producing audio and video, but we also have other, other resources available to us to communicate the end product of a, um, of a, of a class assignment, whether it's audio or even text-based. Um, so we have, a, we have our radio station, we have the Muse, the Gazette, um, if we're thinking bigger and more long-term, um, Smallwood provides funding for, um, uh, research projects that are of interest to people in, in Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, so maybe down, down the road, don't throw out the idea that, uh, writing a book is, is off the table. Maybe you, your students can, you and your students can put together, a, a, a book that Smallwood Press could, could end up publishing. Uh, we have a wonderful office of, of public engagement um, that provides a, a lot of support and uh, and funding for um, opportunities to engage with our public and the uh, and, and the Harris Center as well. Um, and and also not just think about what's available to us within un the university itself, but beyond. Uh, the university walls. Uh, we have local community groups and not for profits who are conducting research on many of the same projects and ideas and, and people that we are um, asking our students to conduct research on, but in the in the scope of a, of a class. So collaboration, um, engagement with uh, the wider community on these issues that we're asking our students to think about. Um, as a is a is some another avenue where we could go, and again outside of uh, outside of the university, we have uh, media outlets who are um, ready and and willing to share the products of our of our classroom re research projects as well. Um, and then ultimately, um, I, I'd like to ask people to reconsider how we conceive of of the uh, scholarly communication cycle itself. Um, if we're asking our students to engage in scholarly work based on um, the tradition of researching a paper, writing a paper, having it reviewed by your course instructor, um, and all the, the, the small things uh, that don't lead anywhere in particular, um, uh, with a traditional method, um, let's consider those people outside of uh, the scholarly community is think about uh, people who can um, who might be able to use or at least find interesting uh, a student essay or a student assignment. Um, there's lots of people outside of the university in our, in our in our community who could benefit from something like what Lauren uh, produced or or even uh, uh, if you do the traditional writer writer research essay. Um, Maybe the, the way it's framed or the, the way it's written, the language that's used may not be accessible to or, or interesting to people outside, but the content sure could be. Um, so let's think about ways we can um, disrupt the scholarly communication cycle uh, and, and include people who are not our uh, uh, scholarly peers in that cycle as well. So that's the that's what we have to offer you today. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'd be happy to uh, take any questions or uh, hear from you guys about any any uh, issues or concerns you might have. We appreciate your time. Thank you. So I guess um, we can just take questions as they as they come, or maybe put up put up your hand. Maybe as uh, we'll, we'll we'll rely on some traditional measures here to uh, to uh, communicate. Hi, Erica. Yeah. Um, so oh, what a fantastic presentation. Thank you. I I just I learned so much. So uh, thank you for that. Um, you. With the notion of bringing your own self into the project. 
Um, were there other people in the class who also did something personal? Um, and how did how did you manage that? Or from Lauren's point of view, you mentioned, you know, that it, there were challenges to kind of putting yourself into it, but uh, how how did you feel on balance that it was it was safe to do that or OK to do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there were some other students who um, worked on or did research in a personally meaningful uh, topic. Um, there were speakers of uh, of an, of uh, and I don't remember off the top of my head of uh, of indigenous languages um, in in the class who wanted to look at um, uh, what it meant to speak an indigenous language and also the way it was perceived um, by speakers of English in in Newfoundland. Um, so so they they didn't communicate to the same extent like I, I got to know Lauren's particular relationship to the assignment after after we started working on this presentation um so so that's another thing too we we don't know what an assignment means to a student until we sit down to talk to them about that right so um so I wish I wish I I wish I did and maybe even going forward there could be a personal statement that students uh, include in their in their in their essays about um, why they took on this topic, whether it meant something to them. Um, so, yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, so I so I don't know about um, what it, what it meant to other students in the class, but Lauren, Lauren might be able to say more about uh, about her relationship to the assignment and what and how like you, you did mention a few, you know, a few times about um, how it was both easy and difficult to to work on a topic that you lived basically right yeah so i think it was easy to just talk about like myself and like my own like um 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 like um um like um 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 uh, um uh experiences but when it came to like the class, it was hard to kind of put the like, I guess, like material to myself. But I do think I would have struggled more if it was something I didn't like uh, connect to or have a lot of like, I guess, like knowledge on. So I think coming from myself, while at first it was hard to kind of make that like a connection, I think in the end, I, it only made me better, um, I guess, like understand the, like, uh, the, like, um, uh, course and, um, like, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, material. So I do think that while it was difficult to first make that connection, I think that it only helped in the long run and, and 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 I do think it would have been a lot harder if I hadn't done it from like a place that I had already you know like lived and whatnot yeah <laughs> thanks Greg yeah you got you got a comment Lauren, uh, uh, as, as a person who stutters now, when I listen to other people who stutter share their stories, it, you know, I, I consider this as a huge accomplishment in terms of it, it takes a lot of courage and a lot of strength to revisit one past and uh, one of the experiences and challenges with, with, with stuttering. And as I mentioned in, in my uh, uh, feedback, and you know, I Oh, I feel you know what you did was a huge accomplishment. Do you feel it is a huge accomplishment? And if so, uh, what's the next? Do um at first when I made it, I was ready to just like scrap it and be like, I don't think I can do this. I don't know if I'm can put like myself out there. And even though it was only for like the class, 
deep down it was still like I was just ready to like to just like re start it in like a whole different way so after I did it and all like the positive feedback I had gotten I think only made me more confident as a person who um 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 uh, stutters so and I think it's made me a lot more confident like I don't think I would have done this like years like ago because even just presenting and talking to people that I'm not like uh, comfortable with can be really like anxiety and scary and you don't know how people are going to like uh, perceive you and so but I do think that like the more I do and like the more that I put myself out there it only makes me more confident and more like at terms with my like um um a uh, stutter so um yeah I do feel a great um um uh, um uh, um uh, accomplishment to look back at myself in um like school and I would never talk I was very quiet I didn't even like um uh raise my hand ever so to do this today is a big step and I just think that this project has allowed me to kind of open up more and kind of share more and only make me more, um, I guess, um, uh, confident as a, um, a person, as like a whole. That's great, Lauren. I'm glad to hear that. And then, uh, oh, I sorry, just... darling. Yep. Sorry, I just wanted to uh, uh, point out that there was a message from Amy there. Great presentation. Yeah. I'm a new instructor with the business faculty, and I've been doing my best to choose assignments that students can use outside of the course. It's great to know I'm on the right path. And of course, then Stacey, thanks everyone for the wonderful presentation. Yeah, thank, thanks, thanks uh, for sharing um, those uh, those comments. And, and Amy, um, yeah, I I, I think um, I, I I don't know. I guess, I guess we kind of know from our colleagues and our own experiences whether we're doing something that is different than uh, um, what we've been taught or what everyone else is doing. Um, and there are and and there are there are people like. Like Erica here, who, uh, who I, I think you can always reach out to people and just share ideas and, and, um, and I'd be happy to, it'd be wonderful if we could start a little group of, uh, reusable assignment, uh, uh, discussion topics and, uh, and how we, how different people are doing that across the university and, and talk about, uh, specifics, but also, um, general principles of, 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 uh, making assignments that have value and use outside of our, of our courses and love to see where, where something like that goes. Um, yeah, Amy. Yep. Let's see if my video turns on. Yeah, it did. Um, yeah. I've only, like I said, I'm a new instructor, so I just started this semester. Uh, okay. As a part Welcome. Time. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> I've never been on the exhibit of teaching before, <laughs> it and it's is. crazy. Um, it the first assignment that I sent out to the student, or put out for the students, um, I just finished correcting it over the weekend, but as an experiment, of course, there's a lot of conversation about AI. Uh, as an experiment, I put that assignment into ChatGTP to see what I got back, and it mm -hmm. matches uh, a couple of the assignments that were submitted. Mm -hmm. um, but so if you make it, so what I'm, I'm sort of figuring out what the next assignment is going to be, but if I make it something that's about them, then of course the AI doesn't have the personal experience portion of it, right? Yeah, yeah. So it right. takes away that ability, but I'm sort of looking at making it like a cover letter for your resume. So same idea. Mm. Now they've got a cover letter that they can that's been pretty much professionally edited and you know gotten the feedback on it, but they can use that when they're moving forward. Yeah, like, you know, oh, that's 
So That's when, when I idea. signed in and heard what you guys were talking about, I was like, oh, this is exactly what I'm trying to figure out. So yeah, this is cool. really, really helpful. Cool. Great, yeah. No, that, that's that's great. I'd be happy to chat more with you guys too. Yeah, uh, Erica. Yeah, I just wanted to echo Paul's uh, point about, um, I guess, especially as a new faculty member, that you can uh, get some, I guess, support for what you're trying if you're trying to do something different. Also, by name dropping CITL. So CITL does a great job in terms of really expanding what we think is possible uh, for the classroom. And so, yeah, so I found that helps if I'm trying something new, if I get some pushback from folks, um, I just very quickly say, uh, oh yeah, I learned about this at a CITL workshop. <laughs> that's right, that's right, yeah. At least you'll you'll be able to refer to like a, a small but growing number of people who, who uh, see things in similar ways, yeah. Uh, Erica, you asked a question about uh, choosing topics. How do how do you help students choose a topic, or do you? Is there a framework or a specific prompt? Uh, I I I don't know. It's such a it's a hard thing to suggest to students to say you should do this. Um, I I provide like a I I. I provided like a general prompt. I think I think that's how that's how to think about it. In this particular class, um, these projects developed over uh, over a number of stages of uh, smaller assignments, building towards the the larger one. Um, one of them is to submit a project pitch. So from the very beginning, um, everything is tentative, right? So, and and I think that's the best way to go through through a learning experience is to think that. Here's where I am right now. This is not the final place. This is not the final uh, stop. Um, but here, here's what I'm. Here's my current thoughts about this topic. Um, and so the the prompt was to you know let's think about um, vulnerable groups who communicate differently. Um, we we get we worked through some examples in class about who those could be. Um, we had other sociolinguistic. Um, uh, theories that we talked about of how they could apply those theories to these specific uh, experiences, and um, but but ultimately they they propose things in stages, and then we and then there, I have a midterm meeting with with all the students, and they say, okay, here's your project pitch, here's my feedback on it, let's talk about where we're going to go next with it. Um, so I think kind of giving them. And Lauren can can tell me whether this worked or, or didn't, but kind of taking it interest at all stages rather than just at the final product um, is a is I think helpful, um, but uh, but it also gets them to refine what might be very vague and fuzzy at the beginning to something more specific as we as we go through those stages. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I can comment. So at first, my project didn't talk about um, like school at all. Mm -hmm. So after I submitted my uh, project pitch, it was very broad. It didn't really hone in on any certain thing. So when I had my midterm meeting with uh, Dr. D. Decker, he kind of explained to me that it was really broad and that it'd be really difficult to talk about stuttering in such a large way. And that if maybe I just focused on one thing or like, what did you find like the most, like, I guess, like, um, like, um, uh, um, uh, challenging. And so then we kind of got talking and we kind of thought we kind of talked and we and then I came to the like um a conclusion that I wanted to um um like um uh, focus it on um uh, school. So I did appreciate that because I think that my project would have been a lot more difficult and broad and maybe wouldn't have been so I guess like significant if I hadn't kind of made it more specific so and i think meeting made it easier because i'm sure 
a lot of students like myself, like I go to like um, a class and then I leave and I never communicate with like the prof and I don't build any sort of like, I guess like relationship. And then it's hard because I want to go on and do other things. And then you need to get these like, what it, um, uh, like, um, um, what are they called? Um, letters of, uh, of, uh, of, um, uh, recommendation. So then it's hard when you don't know your profs and you just go and then you leave. So it was nice to be able to talk and like review it on certain stages because, and then of course it was a lot of also like positive feedback where I thought that my project wasn't very good like at all. So it was nice to kind of have that like positive feedback as well to be like, okay, maybe it is all right. Because I think also talking about myself, you kind of are like, is this really good? Like, I don't know. And it's nice to have that, you know, like feedback and stuff like that. So I did find it very helpful. And I do think that it shaped it into what it is now. And, and and very quickly on that, um, no, we we also had a uh, a peer review session in class as well, where everybody shared their their projects uh, as a class and and gave feedback to each other. So I think that is another another uh, point of um, refinement where you can get the get the ideas from your not just the course instructor, but people people who are working through the project. At, uh, uh, on their own as well. Yeah, we had a, um, a discussion forum, which was really helpful because I didn't want to present it in front of the class and just kind of like sit there and everyone's kind of just like looking at you. So it was nice to have that because I could just like post it and then people could just kind of like type their answer, which is probably a lot more honest than if like, I know in like person, I feel like people would just been like, yeah, it's great and nothing more. So it was nice to kind of actually get feedback because people do get a little bit more like honest over like, like a screen. So I did find that also helpful that that was also like a, a like option to kind of listen and give feedback in like a more comfortable setting at home than in like a class setting. <laughs> 